If you've hired an SEO expert, then you've received an SEO report. I'm going to show you the critical elements that you should be seeing in those reports and how to know when it's time for a change. So as you watch my videos, you're going to tell that I am like tool crazy. I love to geek out over tools that that just, you know, translate this technical world of search engine optimization, I like to call findability, into something that's digestible and easy to understand by a layman, someone who's not a techie, geeky sort of person. <laughs> so I'm going to show you some of my favorite tools. And the first one is a tool called SEMrush.com. Now this tool is one of my favorites. I spend most of my professional career in this one report. And I'm going to walk you through how to take a look at where you rank in the search results and how to generate an SEO report based on your existing ranking. All right, I'm going to show you one of my favorite tools. It's called SEM Rush. Um, I did a bunch of speaking for them and it's a wonderful organization. They have a plethora of tools. Now I'm going to pop into this, but I don't want to, I don't want to intimidate you. So I'm only going to show you one thing about this and then I'll, as you subscribe and watch my additional videos, I'll keep diving into this tool because it has so many great features. What you're going to do is go to semrush.com and you'll see the screen in front of you. Now you're going to put your website address in here. So I'm going to go ahead and put my website, then hit start now. Now the trick with this is going to give you ranking, but it's only going to give you a limited amount because you don't have a paid uh, subscription. I have a paid subscription, so I'm going to go ahead. Now you'll see here I can register to get 10 free requests. It is absolutely worth giving them your email address and setting up a password so you can go in and really have fun geeking out over this tool. I'm going to go over to my next tab where I'm already logged in. Now, what you're going to see when you run your report is I'm just going to come up here to the top, which is the same thing I just showed you. Ooh, I love a tool. I'm showing my geek. <laughs> okay. Let's see what's going on. You know, it's hard because you can subscribe to a lot of different tools. This one is definitely worth subscribing to. The basic account is $99 a month, and that might like get you in the throat a little bit, but when you see what this tool can do, you'll be like, I want that. All right, so we're gonna go back here to Findability, just on the main screen at the very top. And this is the same thing as the homepage screen as well. Now I'm gonna get a dashboard of all of my ranking. Oh, I love a dashboard. So you'll see here that I have 557 keywords I currently rank for. It also tells you like how many backlinks. So I have almost 2,000 backlinks. Backlinks are when other sites are linking from their site to my site. And these are very important because they're like one directional endorsements from other people's websites back to yours. I like to think of them like um, a restaurant review. You have a fabulous dinner and then you go on to like Yelp or some other website and you endorse that restaurant and how great they are. Similar to a backlink is, man, she spoke here, she did this, we love that. And then they link from that their site back to yours, which is gold for Google. They love those one directional backlinks. So I've got a nice backlink profile. Now we're gonna come down here, look at this. So you might think, well, why would anyone from internationally visit my website? Well, you can see here that I have quite an interesting spread of people who are visiting my site from the US to the UK, Canada, Australia, Denmark, and, uh, um, Spain, the Netherlands. I guess I'm huge in the Netherlands. It's only about this much search, so maybe not really huge. <laughs> it also tells you how much people are coming from mobile devices and other. So this can be very, very telling about are you getting reach internationally and not just by um, uh, US uh, searches. So I'm gonna go in here and I'm gonna to click top organic keywords. This is gonna give me a master list of all the keywords that my website currently ranks for. I think a lot of people don't even know these kinds of tools exist. And I love, I love the data because the power is in the data. If you know how you're ranking, then you can hold the people who have said they're doing SEO for you, you can really hold them to task and make sure they're actually doing what you're paying them to do. So let's come down here. You'll see right now, let me walk you through what you're seeing here. So the first one is the exact keyword phrase, findability. So I rank number two for the word findability. 
It's 52% of my total traffic to my website, so people really love that phrase. And it gets 880 searches per month. Now remember, that's one month worth of data. And I'll take that, but then you have to times that by 12 to get the full year, which is, I don't do math in my head, but that's a lot. So 880 is a lot. I'm very happy with that phrase. And you'll see here that we've got the exact page that ranks for it, which is my home page. Now let's take a, take a look and see what other keywords I currently rank for. So SEO coaching is the number two keyword that I rank for. I'm in sixth position. So if you think about a search result page, there's 10 positions on a search result page. Above the fold means I haven't scrolled down yet. It's an old newspaper concept. So if I have a newspaper folded up, above the fold is the newspaper, fold it down, that's below the fold. Why they use a newspaper reference for an internet search, I have no idea, but here we are. So ideally, I want to make sure that I'm above the fold. That would be one to five. And then six is just below the fold. Now here's the scary stats is 86% never scroll down. They're just, they make a decision right at the top. And then 92% never go to page two. They say the best place to bury a dead body is on page two of Google. <laughs> so just keep that in mind that if you're on page two, eh, not really going to be helpful. We want to make sure that you're on page one. So you'll see SEO coaching, I'm just slightly below the fold. It gives me 7% of the total traffic to my website and people search that phrase 320 times per month on average over 12 months. That's a good keyword for me. I'm ranking for SEO coaching. I could do that all day, every day. That's my jam. So SEO coaching is definitely where I want to rank. Then we come down, of course, you're going to always rank for your name, but I love to see that actually Findability University is not the number one way people are searching for me. I want to have more people searching for what I do and what I know and not necessarily for my name. If they're searching for my name, they already know me and that's not helpful to findability. I want to make sure that when people are typing in keyword phrases that they're finding me for that topic, not necessarily just for my name. Now you'll see Candyland Map. <laughs> You're probably like, why does she rank for that? Well, I, I have a video in my YouTube channel called Customer Journey Map. So you might want to check that out because I talk all about how your website and your customer journey is similar to Candyland. Of course, I'm going to rank under my name. I'm going to rank. So Heather, let's see Oprah. I was on Oprah a million years ago. Of course, you don't really ever stop ranking for Oprah keywords. So I'm still on there. And then as you come down, you'll see all the other phrases I rank for. So SEMrush is absolutely fantastic for giving you keyword data. So let's take a peek at WebsiteGrader.com and it's W-E-B-S-I-T-E Grader, G-R-A-D-E-R.com. So what you're seeing in front of me right now is the website Grader. It says, how strong is your website? So we're going to come in here and I'm going to put in my website. Don't have to give them your email address. Remember, they're very good marketers and you're going to hit get your answer. Now the cool thing about this tool is that it gives you a very high level 10,000 feet overview of what your website looks like to a Google bot. Now I got 84, which is an excellent score, but there's always room for improvement. It's like these little tiny tweaks that you can make. So you'll see here performance. I love a big slider. <laughs> And what I'm not talking about a burger. <laughs> I'm talking about a website slider. So let me go to my website and I'll show you what I mean by that. Now, some people argue whether these are a little dated. Some of them say it's dated. I love it. So you'll see here that I've got a nice big slider on my homepage. So if I come down here, you'll see that I have one slider. Then I have my second slider. Then I have my third slider. And then I have my fourth slider. Okay. Now these are great. They're very um, egocentric. I think a lot of business owners love these sliders because they can put these beautiful images on there. However, when we go back to website grader, you'll see that I'm getting dinged on this. So performance is how fast is my website pulling? Is it slow, like taken forever, like molasses, or is it super fast? Google is a nervous Nelly. Google does not want to wait for the data. They want to make sure that that data is being pulled fast. Remember that over 40% of all traffic coming to Google is by mobile devices. So you have to remember your website is like this big, not this big. And Google wants that to pull fast. 
Now, I'm getting dinged on performance because I love my sliders. So I can always go in there and compress it, see if I can get it to pull quicker. But the next one you'll see is mobily responsive. That means I can look at the website this big and I can push it and all the way down to a little tiny screen on a, on a phone and it still looks great. It should beautifully collapse on itself. Let me show you a trick to test your website and how it looks on a mobile device. So I'm gonna come back to my screen and I'm gonna go here. So when you go over to, I use internet, um, I use Chrome, any browser will do this, Firefox, Safari. You're gonna come over here to the very end of the browser and you're gonna get this little double arrow. Then you're gonna pull it over, pull it over, pull it over. Do you see how it's collapsing on itself? Then I'm gonna do is, you'll see here that as I go down, ooh, look, everything has neatly stacked on top of each other. And this is so important because your website better look good on a mobile device. There's how people can come in and run their own website grader. So if you'd like to come in here, you can run a website grader right here. It comes from SEMrush and it will go right into your inbox if you'd like just to kind of shortcut the whole process. It's very important. You'll see here, even my map, it, had, you know, it looked like a Candyland map, right? It goes all the way down. Well, now that map has been compressed and it goes all the way down. So very important that you really take a hard look at what does my website look like on a mobile device. Google will absolutely penalize you if your website is not mobily responsive. The next one is SEO. Now this is an incredibly big topic. Clearly that's what my expertise is in. However, what it's looking at is a keyword consistency on the homepage. Finally, security. Now I don't want you to freak out if the security says zero out of 10. It means that every page in your website needs to be HTTPS. That means that every page in your website is secure. One of the reasons this is so important is because lots of people have WordPress websites. Maybe you have a WordPress website. WordPress is great. It is easy to use. You can you know, set it up. You can add new themes all the time. It's a great, great platform for a website. However, it has a lot of security issues. Do you know some of the number one ways that people save their password is actually the word password. Don't do that. Anything that's available on Facebook, your birthday, your dog's name, your husband's name, your anniversary, these are not things you wanna use for your passwords because people can easily come in and figure out what that password is. That's a no-no, we don't want that. So what we're gonna take a look at is make sure that HTTPS is on every single page of your website. So when Google comes, they see that, okay, I trust you, you have some nice security built in. How do you get that fixed? Call your hosting provider, say, I wanna be on a dedicated IP and a secured server. Now, I'm sorry for all the geek talk, but it's so important you understand this at a baseline level. A dedicated IP is like a cul-de-sac. You move into a cul-de-sac, you got a bunch of neighbors on the cul-de-sac. Hosting companies sell storage or website hosting in something called an IP block, like a cul-de-sac. You have a lot of other people that you're sharing that block with. Now, one site could be a porn site, <laughs> hopefully not. One site could be banned by Google. You're keeping company with, with other websites that have been penalized by Google. You don't want that. Sharing is not caring here. So what we need to do is make sure you're on a dedicated IP, meaning just you on that IP address. And then of course, HTTPS, you set up your hosting on a secured server. Very important. Just give your hosting company a call, say I want a dedicated IP and I want a secured host. Very, very important for your credibility and trust. So as you go down, I've just looked at this whole area right here, performance, mobile, SEO and security. Now, if you scroll down, you're gonna be able to get very specific feedback on how to make these better. So what I would do is you can come up to this little share button right here, top right corner, and you can share it on Twitter, you can share it on Facebook or on Inst uh, LinkedIn if you want to, or you can just come up, here's my little kind of hack, so you don't have to give me your email address and still get the report. You come up here in Chrome to file and print. Now you're able to get all the goodies from this report without ever giving them your email address. Woohoo! Try not to give out your email because <laughs> trust me, especially with HubSpot, 
they will never stop emailing you. No matter how many times you unsubscribe, they keep showing up in your inbox. So remember, you are in control. You own the keys to your website kingdom. Run SEMrush.com, get the keywords you're currently ranking for, and then go to Website Grader and see how you can continue to tune up your website. These elements are so important to Google and they should be important to you. Have you hired an SEO person and didn't really know what they were doing or didn't have a way to check their work? Well, I'm going to give you my book, Marketing Espionage. Chapter 10 is how to hire and fire a web developer and how to really understand what you're getting for your SEO dollar. So below in the description, I have a free download of my book. Go to chapters 10, 11, and 12 to really understand what are you buying and are you getting your money's worth?